What's going on? This is Charlie from Exclusive Auto Works. Um, today, I'm coming at you with an instructional video on graph tech plotters. It's not gonna be a crazy in-depth video, but I just wanted to show you some of the settings that we use for the plotter for plotting PPF and vinyl. We mainly do PPF here, so the settings that I'm gonna be instructing you about are gonna be PPF related, and it's nothing too crazy. So the main settings that we focus on here are speed and force. Speed is gonna be the speed at which the machine operates, and force is gonna be how deep or how hard the blade cuts. Um, so changing those kind of settings allow you to cut different materials and you're gonna need to change them or make different conditions, which I will also get into, uh, based on what material you're using. So without further ado, we'll get right into it. All right, so before I get into the settings, uh, I just wanted to show off the plotter that we actually use here. Um, so obviously this is a GraphTech model. Um, specifically, this is the 48 inch version of their plotter. Uh, I'm not sure what the exact model is, but this is the 40 inch, 48 inch, like I said. Uh, basically, that means that the max roll or sized roll you can use in this plotter is a 48 inch roll. Um, so with that said, that means for this one, we can't use 60 inch rolls, which is the standard size for most vinyl and PPF uh, rolls. So we can't use those here, but again, for those films, you're pretty much only gonna be cutting hoods and quarter panels, which are panels that are bigger than uh, 48 inches. Uh, we bulk those here, so we don't need to be plotting them. So that's why we went with the 48 inch. So yeah, I'm gonna just also show you some of the basic parts of this plotter. You have an on-off switch right over here on the left side. You can see, oh, right over here. On the left side, um, nothing crazy, just your standard on-off switch. You have your interface here with the buttons that used are used to change the settings. Um, you also have three grit rollers here so this is what moves the film forward and backwards. And then this cutter here goes side to side. Uh, and when these two work in tandem, it is able to cut any kind of pattern that you have on your software. A good tip to know is that you don't need to use all three as long as the left roller is in standby. And what that is, I'm gonna turn this a little bit. All standby is, is just letting the plotter know that from here on out, this roller is not being used. Other than that, if the plotter was not in standby, or not the plotter, the roller was not in standby, uh, it is gonna only be able to plot within the three rollers. So right now I have it in its pretty much widest position. This is 42 inches, even though this is a 48 inch roller, 42 inches is the max width for these rollers. Um, and then from there, it goes to 36, 30, 24, 18, 12, and then six. Um, so for most plots, you're gonna be using a 36 inch roll, 30 inch roll, uh, or 48. So you're gonna be using mainly these three, I would say. Um, you could be using just two rollers over here in the smaller section, if you're using a very small piece of vinyl. Um, but it is important to know that whatever you are plotting, it has to be inside the three rollers. All right, and then here to the cutting part of the plotter. Um, it's very simple. It's a belt driven assembly. So this white part is a belt. There's nothing much to it. The only thing you really need to know is that you can swap and adjust the blade height using this knob here. So going counterclockwise loosens the actual blade assembly. So you can see right at the bottom there is the actual blade, the tip of the blade. And you could also change the height of it by turning this part up top either clockwise or counterclockwise. So clockwise is gonna make the blade extend. So you can see it just went a little lower and counterclockwise will make it retract. So this is kind of like a manual physical fail safe way of adjusting the force or the uh, depth that the blade is actually gonna be going down. All right, so that is the cutting part of the plotter. Now we're gonna move on to the interface, which is where all the settings are. All right, so this is the main interface. Um, all you need to know, there's a screen here. You have your buttons, and then you have two users. So you have your indicator light here, and that's gonna tell you which is your on. Uh, this does say user one and user two, but we put stickers here to indicate PPF and tint to not confuse the two, um, because we do PPF and tint here, and this plotter could do both. So this is gonna be your main menu screen. This is most likely what you're gonna see when you first turn on the plotter. You have a few options here. One is select user. Um, that's literally just a change between the two users up here. These two, view and home, aren't really important, but condition here is the one that we use the most. Uh, this is where you're gonna be changing your settings. 
So what conditions are, are pretty much sub users or uh, presets that you can have underneath your actual user. So you're gonna have 16 total between the two users. So eight each. So PPF here is gonna have eight conditions and Tint is gonna have eight. So to access the condition menu, you're gonna hold enter. It says E here right next to condition number. So that's enter, you hold E and you can see one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Uh, right now we're on three and to change between the conditions, you can just press the corresponding icon next to it. So one, two, three, four is on the left side. One, two, three, four. For numbers five through eight, you just need to use the directional arrow keys. So up would be five, dip down is six, left is seven and right is eight. And then zero is reset. So that reset all the presets that you have already, all the settings. Um, so don't touch that unless you plan on actually resetting everything. So we're gonna go back to three. So you can see up here, it says condition number three. That just allows you to see, to make sure uh, you know what condition you're on. And if I hit condition here, this is where we could actually change the settings of the condition. Again, it says condition number three here. Um, you have your speed and your force. These are the main ones that you're gonna be using. Tool, you don't really need to worry about. I'm not 100% sure what that even means or why you need to change it. Um, I left it as it was from the factory and it's been working fine. So speed, again, is gonna be how fast the machine operates. I found that 15 centimeters per second is the sweet spot for me. Um, anything above that was too fast and anything below was too slow. You can see by hitting three, the speed setting. So right now I'm on 15, if I go down, it goes down to 10. If I go up, back to 15, up one more, back to 20. Uh, anything above 10 goes in increments of five, just because if you're going fast, you don't really need to fine tune it. And then anything below 10 goes in increments of one. So I'm gonna put it back to 15. And once you're at the number that you want, you just hit enter to set it. So enter, and now that's set. Four is force. Force, again, is how hard that the blade is gonna be pushing down on the film. This is a good setting to know because there are a lot of different brands of PPF or vinyl, and they each have their own unique thickness. And you need to change your blade force depending on which material you're using. That is also why conditions are good because you could have uh, up to eight conditions with different forces. So that means you could potentially have up to eight different films that you could use it at the same time. You would just have to change the condition to plot it. So right now I'm on 24. This is what I found was good for vinyl or satin PPF, just because it doesn't have a cap sheet and they're about the same thickness. If I go back to the menu, change it to condition number four, you can see that this one is force 30. This is what I use for my regular PPF, my glossy PPF that comes with a cap sheet. So this will cut straight through the cap sheet and the film at the same time, and just makes, uh, makes it a very easier process for plotting that kind of film. So I essentially don't have to take the cap sheet off before I plot, which is a big time killer. Um, so doing this will save you plenty of time. Um, there is no set number, so 30 might not work for you, uh, depending on what film you're using, because again, you gotta experiment yourself. Um, this is just what we experimented with and found that worked perfectly for our films. Uh, we use S-Tech or Stack Film, um, so if you wanna go ahead and try these settings, if you're using the same kind of film, these might work for you, but you're gonna have to experiment on your own. Um, you could also go down, there's way more settings that you can use. Um, we don't even touch these. These are more complicated. When you get down to here, you don't really need to use those unless you are looking to fine tune your machine. Um, but yeah, for basic cutting, we just adjust speed and force. So that is gonna be the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed. Um, I really do hope it was helpful because I know these are very tricky machines to work with. So if this was helpful, please leave us a like. Uh, we greatly appreciate it. That being said, I'll catch you in the next video. Later.